Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up. Do you remember those pesky triplet teenage girls who went hunting with the corn? Well, we're off with them again, and this time we're going shooting. With the parliamentary debate coming up about the future of shooting, one man has taken it upon himself to preview the argument. It's a very important part of our culture with more than a million participants and perhaps 70,000 jobs dependent upon shooting. And we're going for a light-hearted romp through the Edwardian shooting party. Lord Walsingham shot 1,070 grouse to his own gun. But first, 150,000 people, probably you, will be going to Ragley Hall in Warwickshire this weekend for the CLA Game Fair. Let's see what's in store. Well, every year they do it in a great big English country house, and this year's no exception. For the first time, it's at Ragley Hall in Ulster, Warwickshire. It's going to be that special CLA panoply of fly fishing, falconry, parades of hounds, gun dogs. The shooting line is so important. You'll have horses, big ones, small ones. The pony club will undoubtedly be there. You'll have fast dogs, lurches, very good looking gun dogs, of course, the hounds. I think I mentioned them. It's the whole world of British field sports brought together in the right place, a nice looking estate. And we'll be there. Field Sports Channel has got a giant screen on Gunmakers Row right by the Gunmakers Pub. It's about a thousand times the size of this. So you can sit down for a drink and watch our great shows, any of the ones you've missed, and a few words from our sponsors. Look out for our two new DVDs on the Sporting Shooter stand on Gunmakers Row. You'll find Pigeons, the Experts Way. And on the William Evans stand are Brand new classic English game shooting with Mike Yardley. And if you see us wandering around the game fair site carrying cameras and wearing our corporate t-shirts, don't hesitate to come up and say hello. You never know, you could be cast by Field Sports Channel. Or shot by Field Sports Channel for that matter. I'm Harriet. I'm Amy. I'm Laura. Well, they're back. Those Trixie Symes triplets from Leicestershire and their long-suffering elder sister Charlotte only this time they're armed. They are anxious to go shooting, even trying their luck on the Browning Rabbit Mania at the CLA Game Fair this weekend. Today we have brought them to a special Young Guns Day at the Oxford Gun Company to get a few tips on technique from top instructor David Florent. It's off to the first stand and Harriet as a left-hander thinks she's at a disadvantage. The other two are right-handed. I'm the worst at my sisters, but I like to use the left-handed thing as an excuse. <laughs> it's a windy day, so the trajectory may well change. That's what we're going to shoot first, everyone, right? Nice and basic. Starts on the truck, starts on the grass, let it come up, and it stalls in the air. And that's where we're going to try shooting, right? Okay. Now, I'm not going to put any cartridges in the gun. I'm just going to go through the technique, basic okay. technique first. Stand next to me there. Take your, take your half a pace forward. Right, your legs straight. Whole idea. First up is All Amy, and after a few tips on stance, okay. she's away. Well shot. Happy with that? Yeah. Right, let's let somebody else have a go. Oh. Head on the wood. Wait forward. Right, let me do the work. Don't fight me, right? Next, okay. it's Laura, on target. No. Happy with that? Yes. <laughs> And then left-handed Harriet. Well done. <laughs> Finally, it is older sister Charlotte, and there seems to be a problem so with her choice of gun. Me. David thinks it's can too I, small for her. Can I make a suggestion? Time to make a change. Have a go. David talks about different guns and points out the advantages of a high comb. Browning have a very high comb there, which stops you doing. If you've got a Maruku or a Beretta that's got a very low comb, you'll do that because there's no wood there to keep your head up straight. If you've got something that's high in the comb, it keeps your head up straight there. It's time to head back for an early lunch and a chance to relax. But not too much relaxing as the TV goes on and no chance to catch up with EastEnders. This is the Richard Folds clay shooting DVD. Thank you for joining me on the leading edge. Throughout the course of this programme... 
the young guns now head off for a different type of target and one that proves popular, rabbit. So how do the triplets feel the day is going? Well, when the clay was coming across, I kind of put the gun down instead of putting it up. I think I've got a better technique now than I did when I first came. The best trap was the one we just did because I found it the easiest. Yes, well, I've learned how to stand properly now and I find it easy to place my hands when I put my cheekbone on the gun now. I've learned really just how to do it properly because normally we just um, learn from my dad um, but we've just learned more professionally really. I used to get quite scared about putting like my gun into my shoulder in case it hurt so um, once I got used to my gun it's kind of like no don't go, I'm like keep it. <laughs> yeah apparently I need a bigger gun now. <laughs> Clothing company Sealand supports the Young Guns initiative. Here is Sealand's Simon Esnaf. I think um, introducing kids to guns, to country sports, uh, as early as you possibly can. Uh, or as early as they are interested, I don't think they should be forced, but uh, I see lots of kids, particularly at the Schools Challenge, and, and they've been shooting for a number of years already, and they're absolutely fascinated by it and just enthralled by shooting. And it, it's great that there is a proper structured uh, um, organisation for them to actually take part in and, 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 and compete. I'm sure that most kids don't want to compete but they certainly want to have a go. The local NFU are also fully supportive. As far as young people are concerned I think it's a great idea to offer them a sport that doesn't involve sitting in front of a computer. I think it's far more um, healthy to shoot at clays than it is to shoot at imaginary figures on a computer screen. Now it's competition time. And let's see who is about to put into practice what they've learned today. Back in the clubhouse, and it's time to announce the winner. Yes, it's Charlotte. The change of gun clearly worked. We had a competition on a going away bird and an incoming bird, and we got eight shots at each. Yeah, I shot with the, um, big, the 12 this time round, instead of my normal one. Our friends from the King's Ginger a super shoot snifter have come up with this animated guide to driven game shooting. 1903. Britain has smashed the Impi, put down the Ashanti, and King Edward VII is on the throne. It is an age of excess. <laughs> Formerly Bertie, Prince of Wales, along with Lord Walsingham, the Marquis of Ripon, and the Maharaja Julip Singh, Ooh, afternoon. Bertie was one of the great shots of the day. Their records are remarkable. On the 30th of August, 1888, Lord Walsingham shot 1,070 grouse to his own gun. Now all this shooting means lots of travel for the king between country houses and from then to his stands, often in the newfangled open-top horseless carriages. This worried his doctor. <gasps> Indeed, it worried his doctor so much, he decided his majesty needed a restorative. Did he seek one from the king's chemist? He did not. He went straight to the king's wines and spirit suppliers, Merry Brothers and Rudd whose shop was, and still is conveniently located, opposite the doors to St. James's Palace. They tried a number of concoctions. Slow gin? <laughs> Cherry brandy? <laughs> Apple vodka? <laughs> Until they came up with this. The King's Ginger. <laughs> his Majesty was delighted. His vigour renewed, ever more birds fell to his gun, and the drink became an essential part of the Edwardian house party. <laughs> Sorry. And the best news is, the King's Ginger is still available to discerning shooters. Just ask for it at your own warrant holder for wines and spirits. Or visit Berry Brothers' excellent website at www.thekingsginger.com, where you can order it online. <coughs> Sorry. Now, Mike Yardley, don't forget to buy his DVD. Mike Yardley is one of the most popular shooting commentators around. And in the run-up to the parliamentary debate, in the wake of the Cumbria and Raoul Moat shootings, he's taken it upon himself to send the politicians a message. He tells us all about it. The whole purpose of this film is to show shooting as it really is. I tend to think that many people today have a vision of shooting, a version of shooting, that comes to them through the media. They see guns being misused, for example, in war, in armed crime, on the news and in their tabloid papers. 
The misuse of firearms is the norm in popular entertainment. And also we have the whole area of gaming culture now with extremely violent computer games which incidentally have actually been linked to some of the recent Amok killings. So this film is showing the shooting sports and the use of firearms by professionals as it really happens in the UK. And it's not just for people in the shooting community to watch, although I want us to watch it and I want everyone within the field sports brother and sisterhood to watch the film, but I also want them to take it and show it to their friends who don't shoot their councillors, their MPs, anyone who may be of influence. The film shows, and I think the theme of it, is that for many of us, shooting is no more than golf with guns. It's a very challenging sport, a lot of fun, but it's something pursued by ordinary people. There are more than a million of us who shoot. 600,000 people with shotgun certificates, 140,000 with firearm certificates just in England and Wales, not including the people with air guns. It's an awfully big part of British sporting culture and I think what also is unclear to a lot of people is it's right up there with fishing, with golf and other participatory sports. It's just a bit of a hidden sport. Whatever you do you cannot prevent a mock killing by banning objects and I think it is very important at this time that we don't see more knee-jerk legislation. Happily thus far the response of media and politicians has been a lot more sensible, I think, than it was after Dunblane. And people do realise that knee-jerk legislation, we've had the Dangerous Dogs Act, we've had firearms legislation banning certain classes of firearms, which produced no positive benefits whatsoever. And I think people do realise that that sort of legislation doesn't work. But they do have a right to explore the subject, and I hope this film will help them explore the subject. So I say to you, watch it, judge it for yourself. If you are a shooter or if you are in the field sports community, show it to your friends who don't shoot or are unfamiliar with this sort of stuff. Show it to people in positions of authority, your MP, local councillors, whoever might be interested in it. Because one thing I think we do have to do now, we have to realise that it's partly our fault that the public don't know more about what we do. We are actually a major part of British culture. Shooting sport has been going on in this country for probably the best part of 500 years. It's got a long and proud tradition. We've won a clutch of medals at the Olympics and in international competition. We've still got some of the best gun makers in the world. It's a big part of our culture and it's a very important part of our culture with more than a million participants and perhaps 70,000 jobs dependent upon shooting. So, look at the film, make up your own mind. Shooting is one of this country's most popular and safest sports. Nearly three quarters of a million people hold firearm and shotgun certificates, and many more shoot under the supervision of authorised persons and with air guns. That's well over a million in total. Shooting brings together people of widely different backgrounds. It's a social sport in which men and women, young and old, able-bodied and the disabled all take part on equal terms. It's a sport at which this country has a proud tradition. We excel in Olympic and other international competition. It's also a sport which helps drive the economy. Expenditure by participants amounts to more than £2 billion each year. Shooting supports the equivalent of 70,000 jobs, including some supreme British craftsmen who keep alive ancient artisan skills that would otherwise be lost. And there are many publications and periodicals devoted to the subject of shooting. The sport takes many different forms. Clay shooting, game shooting, stalking and deer management, target rifle shooting, muzzle loading with black powder guns, and not least, shooting with air guns. In addition to the sporting uses of firearms, the main subject of this film, Firearms are routinely used by a wide variety of professionals. Vets, farmers, gamekeepers, forest rangers and pest controllers, for example. And we might also mention collectors and firearms historians, who've added to the corpus of knowledge and our national heritage whilst assembling and researching their collections. Shooting is a tightly regulated sport. There's been a requirement for a firearm certificate for rifles since 1920. Shotguns have been certificated by the police since 1967. 
shooters take safety very seriously. Because they do, shooting's one of the safest sports in Britain. Even competitive athletics is more dangerous. Different shooting disciplines use different types of gun and have very different traditions. All share dedicated participants who regard shooting as an important and uniquely satisfying part of their life. Clay shooting has been popular in this country for more than a hundred years. It takes three basic forms. Trap shooting, where all targets are going away. Skeet, where most targets are crossing. And sporting, where targets are thrown to simulate field conditions. The target itself is a pitched disc, about four and a quarter inches wide, and the gun used is always some kind of shotgun. That is a smooth bore which fires a cartridge loaded with shot, usually about 300 small pellets, rather than a single bullet as fired through the spirally grooved barrel of a rifle. Game shooting, the sport of shooting birds flying, or on the wing as it used to be called, was first brought to this country by the courtiers of Charles II. It involves shotguns, and the quarry, typically pheasants, partridge or grouse, may be driven to the guns by a team of beaters or walked up less formally. Some shooters devote themselves entirely to pigeon shooting, which is an important form of crop protection. Others devote themselves to wildfowling, conserving and harvesting ducks and geese on the foreshore or on flight ponds situated inland. Many of our foreshores are wardened by wildfowlers. All forms of game shooting involve conservation work. Indeed, shooting itself is a very small part of the whole, typically the final harvest at what may have been a year of very hard work. Game shooting in Britain helps to preserve the countryside. Without it, the country would be a much poorer place, with fewer woods, hedgerows and songbirds. People come from all over the world to shoot in this country, bringing with them significant revenue and employment to otherwise depressed areas. Stalking may take place on the hill in Scotland or in woods, so-called woodland or lowland stalking. The line which divides stalking from deer management is very fine. If deer were not controlled though, they'd die from disease and starvation. They have no natural predators in this country. Changes in agricultural practice and creeping urbanisation have denied them much of their traditional habitat. Target rifle shooting is a long established sport. It has its origins in the Victorian volunteer movement, out of which the Territorial Army grew. Target rifle shooting today may involve 2 2 weapons or full ball rifles, as seen in the famous Queen's Prize meeting at Bisley every year. This country has some of the world's finest shots, not least the late Malcolm Cooper, a double Olympic gold medalist and eight times world champion. Then there's the inimitable George Digweed, 16 times world sporting champion, Richard Folds, double trap champion at the Sydney Olympics, and the incredible Mick Gold, 15 Commonwealth gold medals. Muzzle loaders use black powder, shotguns, rifles and pistols. The guns may be original or replicas. They might be match locks, wheel locks, flint and steel, or percussion cap. Muzzle loading is living history. It's great fun, but muzzle loading competitions taken very seriously indeed. Shooting with air guns is a vast sport. There's air rifle and pistol shooting as seen at the Olympics, field target shooting, and air gun hunting and pest control. Many just enjoy informal practice in their garden or field. It's an activity enjoyed by more than a million. Uh, what I find so encouraging about shooting is that women like me can compete on equal terms with men. Children can do it, old people can do it, fat people, thin people, disabled people compete on equal terms with able-bodied people. You, you don't have to be special in order to shoot. Well, Great Britain is actually the best at it in the world. Great Britain's shooting team has won more gold medals than any athletic team in this country. Not many people realise that. We've done very well at, at clay shooting and uh, we're the best there is. Well, shooting is important to me because I enjoy the country life. I enjoy the day out with friends. I enjoy working with dogs. And in general, I just love the countryside and I think shooting is part of it. Yes, what do you been, think, Mick? I've been shooting since I was about nine or ten. Uh, my father taught me to shoot. Um, it's just fantastic coming out at the weekend after a stressful week in the office, nine till five, and um, just just having a wander around and seeing the countryside and being with good good friends. It's a great day. Well, there you are. Shooting really is a sport for all. 
If you haven't tried it, I hope you may be tempted to have a go. If you're a shooter already, you may have discovered bits of your sport that you weren't even aware of. And one more thing, please try and show this film to anyone you know that doesn't shoot, that doesn't participate in our great tradition. Thanks very much. This has been Field Sports Britain. We're back next week with a fantastic Game Fair 2010 package. And if you're at the Game Fair on Saturday, come along at 11.30 to the Game Fair Theatre, where I'll be talking about angling with Bernard Cribbins. And if you're there on Friday night, pop over to the British Deer Society tent. Could be a good party.